Hey fungi friends, I'm up in Napa and I just found this beautiful piece of lion's mane. So this is Harissum arenaceus. It's a white rot fungi that's growing sapropically, sort of a weak parasite on this oak tree here. Uh, they're fairly common in winter on oak trees here in California, but in some places of the world they are protected fungi. So in the UK you can't pick these, but here we can. Uh, they are delicious, absolutely delicious edible mushrooms with this sort of mild, uh, light mushroomy flavor that's not very earthy and has texture somewhat reminiscent of seafood. And they are sort of polypore-esque in terms of them growing on trees, being weakly parasitic. They'll fruit on the same tree year after year, but clearly they don't have pores. So instead they have these little teeth. Um, they're called hydnoid fungus in terms of having teeth and that's their morphology is that they're sort of considered a tooth fungus, even though they're more closely related to polypores. Uh, but they are really cool mushrooms because they can grow for many weeks at a time. This one's starting to get a little bit old. You can see discoloration on the teeth. Uh, it's starting to get a little kind of like ratty on top, but it's still going to be a good edible. Uh, and these are packed full of lots of different bioactive components. So the polysaccharides like the beta-glucans and some of the polysaccharide protein complexes, along with sesquiterpenes, diterpenoids, all these sort of slew of, of molecules that have these biological activities are present in this mushroom. And that's part of how this thing can grow and survive out in nature for so long. Many mushrooms get moldy within you know, a week or so of coming out, but these can grow for almost a full month, if not more, uh, as long as it stays wet enough. And so this one's getting a little dry, like I said, and it's probably because it dried out a bit, but now that it's rained, it's rehydrated, and it's looking pretty prime. So I think we're gonna go ahead and, and knock this off. Uh, it's really gorgeous. It's kind of buried deep in this, this crevice. I'm gonna get my, my knife in here and just try to cut down in there sever this off and use my hand to gently pull this right on out. Wow, look at that nice big lump of lion's mane. So like I said, it's getting a little ratty on top and we'll just trim this part off, but the rest of this is looking like a really beautiful edible mushroom. Uh, and this is, you know, it's just an edible mushroom, but it's also one that people consider medicinal. Uh, and that's because of all of those bioactive polysaccharides I mentioned in this mushroom, uh, they can have effects on helping to stimulate your immune system, getting chopped up by your white blood cells and pieces of those polysaccharides get repurposed as antigens and by your white, white blood cells to help recognize foreign particles. They also help you uh, diversify your gut microbiome because there's all these sort of very specific carbon linkages in those co complex polysaccharides that require certain types of bacteria to break down those particular linkages. And that's been part of the reason that they think this will help stimulate your immune system. There's also the idea out there that lion's mane can help to stimulate nerve growth. And that's because there's harrisonones in the fruiting body and aerosines in the mycelium that would be here in the wood. And so those two compounds have been shown in vitro, which means sort of in a test tube in a lab, uh, to stimulate nerve growth by activating this human nerve growth hormone or factor. Uh, but it's less clear if they actually have that kind of effect in human beings. There is some preliminary evidence from clinical studies that some of the heresines can actually uh, pass the blood-brain barrier and maybe help with cognitive decline in, in diseases like Alzheimer's, but it's still kind of unclear. So there needs to be a lot more like research and science done. And it's possible that while these mushrooms may contain these medicinal compounds, that it might still be a purification process to produce enough of that compound to have a, a really effective clinical dose. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just stoked we found this big, beautiful, wonderful lion's mane here in Napa. This is a very sort of distinctive, like woody, slightly acidic, uh, almost floral kind of smell with hints of seafood. Maybe that's just because it's getting a bit old. Uh, but this is a really, really, really cool, just absolutely gorgeous lion's mane. So come check out all those beautiful little teeth and uh, kind of this big, saggy, soggy top here. But uh, it's a really cool, cool lion's mane. So this is Harissum arenaceus lion's mane, and it is a fantastic edible mushroom. Okay, so 
This lion's mane is a little old and a little soggy, um, so what I'm going to do to trim it up is to just kind of gently work my knife in here. The parts that were close to the wood are extra dirty and extra soggy and extra tough, so I'm going to trim those off pretty carefully. Uh, most of the fruiting body is still good here, so I don't want to cut off too much. Uh, it's easy to kind of accidentally rip off a lot, but I do see these kind of brown bits and these soggy bits. Those will be a little bit bitter, uh, and they're still pretty tough. So I think what I'm doing here is trying to trim off the stuff that's pretty tough, pretty brown, won't be good eats. And what we're going to do also is take all these little bits of mushroom and go sprinkle them around on local trees, hoping that we can infect them with this too. Uh, this is a pretty benign parasite, so it's not like a honey mushroom that'll take down a whole forest. Uh, it can grow for many, many years on the same tree, and it's already sort of infected this whole area. Anyhow, um, so we're just helping along the mushroom, making sure there'll be a lot more lion's mane for next year. But uh, this will be pretty good. This is a, a nice looking mushroom. It's really, really good just to cook up straight in butter. Uh, you can shred it and make crab cakes out of it. You can do really any number of things uh, with it. I particularly like to batter and fry it as kind of like a shrimp dupe kind of thing, fried shrimp, because uh, it really does play into that, that sort of seafood flavor and texture. Uh, and it's a phenomenal, you know, vegan ingredient, vegetarian ingredient, but it's also goes really well with meat. And I think lion's mane is one of my favorite mushrooms to cook with uh, ground meat because the texture is so sort of similar and they just really complement each other well. It's also really, really good with, uh, with tofu and a lot of Asian flavors and dishes. I think it really excels. Um, so lion's mane is definitely one of my favorite edibles. It's what I call an incredible edible because I think it's top tier. Uh, it's cultivated and it is also wild. And I find the cultivated version to be a little bit more palatable often than the wild ones because these are kind of soggy and wet. Uh, but you can't argue with finding a nice, big, beautiful one like this. Uh, even if it does need a little bit of editing. So what a fantastic lion's mane.